we've seen that it's really nice if we have an orthogonal basis. For example, if I have a vector and I want to write it in terms of an orthogonal basis, then we can figure out all the coefficients of my expansion very quickly just by looking at a few different dot products. So we really like having an orthogonal basis, but what we have done in the past is all of these methods by which we can find not an orthogonal basis, just a regular old basis. So for instance, suppose I have some non-zero subspace W, we have seen many different ways in the past whereby we might have come up with a regular old basis in X1 down in XP for this subspace W. So our goal is going to be to find an orthogonal basis for the same subspace W. And the method called Gram-Schmidt is a methodology that takes a regular basis and transform it into the nicer orthogonal basis. And the, the V1 down to the VP, these orthogonal vectors, are related to the original basis vectors, the X1 down to the XP. So the method works like this. First up, if I just want to look at the first orthogonal vector, there's going to be no change at all. The, the V1 here is defined to be equal. I put colon equal because I'm defining the thing on the left that I don't understand by the thing on the right that I do. It's just going to be the same thing as this first vector x. The idea here is that if you have only one vector in your subspace, then one vector is clearly going to be an orthogonal basis. There's no other vector to even take its dot product with that could ever be zero. So vectors that are generated by only one vector, one-dimensional subspaces, they're, they're always an orthogonal basis if you have a non-zero vector. Next up, I want to define a second vector, a V2. And before I put in what the formula is going to be here, I want to think about what I'm trying to accomplish. Because there's a couple different things that I want to have for this V2. First of all, I want to have that the dot product with V1 has to be equal to zero. We're demanding that this was an orthogonal basis, and since we already have one vector specified, if I come up with the second one, this V2, then their dot product better be equal to zero. They better be orthogonal. But the other thing I need to consider is that this orthogonal basis still needs to be an orthogonal basis for W. In other words, we, we want to make sure that when we change from X's to V's, that we're not changing the span. So in this condition that we have here, I want that the span of the two vectors, the V1 and the V2, that these are going to be the same thing as the span that I began with. This is going to be the same thing as the span of the X1 and the X2. So that's sort of my condition I need to have in here. I need it to be orthogonal, but orthogonal in a way that doesn't change the span. Now, I think this is going to be easiest to be dealt with if we try to draw a little bit of a picture as to what's going on here. So let me imagine that I've got some vector, and I'm going to call this my vector x1, and that's the same thing as the vector v1. We know that there's not going to be any changes there. And then I'm going to draw in here, this is the vector x2. So if I think about these two vectors, they're two vectors somewhere, they generate some plane, and I'm trying to find a v2 that's orthogonal to the v1, and where the span is going to be the same. So I'm going to split it up like this. We know how to do orthogonal projections. That was one of our key components that we've been studying recently. And so I could instead look at this vector, which is straight up here. I could define that to be my v2 vector. And it's going to have the property that it's going to be orthogonal to the v1, so that the v2 dotted with the v1 is going to be the same. And then, at least geometrically when we look at this, this is under proof, but geometrically it seems clear that if I've got this one vector and this other vector here, that they generate some plane no matter how I choose to orient them. If I've got two vectors, they generate some plane. But that this pair of vectors is also going to generate the same plane. So I think that using this orthogonal projection, I'm going to have the same span as well. All right, so what exactly is my V2 in this case? Note that there's a vector that's going to lie right here. This is the vector, which is the projection of x2 onto this v1. In other words, 
the vector that we have here is going in the direction of V1, but it has length the projection of the x2 down onto the V1, which has coefficient x2 dot V1 divided by V1 dot V1. That is our coefficient for this vector here. And then what my V2 is going to be is going to be the vector x2 minus that particular projection. Or in other words, if I come over to where I need to fill it in, so we can say that this is equal to the vector that we're given, this x2, but then I'm subtracting off the projection down onto the v1. I'm subtracting off the x2 dotted with the v1 divided by the v1 dotted with itself. That's some coefficient all in the v1 direction. And indeed, I'll leave it as an exercise to algebraically verify that we have not changed the span. The span of the v1 and the v2 is the same as the span of the x1 and the x2. All right, so let's keep on going. We've got into v1 and the v2. Now we've changed an orthogonal basis. We haven't changed the span. Let's turn to the third one. I want to look at v3 here. And the story is somewhat similar. What I have right now is I've got two, a v1 and a v2. They generate some subspace. So let's turn and try to draw a, another geometric picture for this one. I want to say something like this. Now what I have is a subspace, and I'll draw my subspace that looks like this. But, but I'm thinking of it as a subspace where I've got two vectors that are generating it. I have the initial v1 vector, and I have a v2 vector as well. And then all linear combinations of the v1 and the v2 are going to generate this plane. And then what I've been given is some other vector. How about this vector right here? This is the vector x3. And what I can do is I can do its orthogonal projection down onto this particular plane. And I could get a nice 90 degree angle. We know how to do an orthogonal projection down onto a subspace, down onto some lower dimensional plane. And so what I want to set my v3 then is going to be this vector that's straight up here. I want to have that being my v3. In other words, if I take the orthogonal projection, that's the orthogonal projection down on the plane, then the difference between x3 and the orthogonal projection is going to be given by my v3. So that's my geometric picture. And it's the same sort of process that keeps on going. I'm always going to have some subspace. I take a vector outside of the subspace, I look at its orthogonal projection onto the subspace, and then when you take the difference, you get a vector that's orthogonal to the subspace, orthogonal to everything that you had before. And so that is going to be consistently giving these vectors that keep on being orthogonal, but do not change the span. Okay, so let's get for the actual algebraic formula that we're going to slot into here. So I'm looking for my third vector. It's going to be the x3, and then I'm going to write it first like this. I'm going to say it is the projection of the vector x3 onto some subspace here. I normally have to put in a subspace here, but, but what I will put in there is the span of the vectors v1 and v2. It's a projection onto this lower dimensional subspace from the previous vectors. And then the actual formula for that, as we've seen in the past, is that I take my x3 and I am going to subtract off, in effect, the projection onto each of the basis vectors of this span of v1. In other words, it's the x3 down onto the first basis vector, so that's the v1 divided out by v1 dot v1, and all in the v1 direction. So very analogous to what we had before, but I also have to subtract off the component that's in the v2 direction. So I want to take my x3, and I want to dot it with the component in the v2 direction, all divided by v2 dotted with v2. That's my coefficient in the v2 direction. And then this process continues. We continue to iterate. And so I'm going to go along all the way down to a pth step, where I'm saying that the pth vector is going to be equal to the pth x vector minus the 
all of the different projections onto all of the previous vectors. So for example, the first of these is going to be taking this p vector and dotted on the first one and divide it out by the length of the first one. Formula looks messy, by the way, but you'll write it down enough times that you'll quickly memorize it. Minus, minus a second, minus a third, and then finally all the way to the xp dotted on the, the final previous one, which is p minus one. We're, we're doing the p stage, we've done all the way up to the p minus one stage, divided by the p minus one dotted with the p minus one. That's some big coefficient, all in the v p minus one direction. So that's our methodology. We start with these vectors x, and we create these vectors v that have the same span, that they, they're a basis for the same subspace w. I haven't changed the subspace when I go through this process. But what I have changed is the vectors are now orthogonal. And in every step, what I do is I take my vector and I subtract off the projection onto the span of all the previous vectors. And that's going to give me a vector that is both orthogonal, but doesn't change the span. 